If you slog through the first eight videos in this series, and if you practiced with actual maps, you know how to read a standard U.S. topo map. Now it's time to apply that knowledge to make you a much better hiker. In this video, I'll show you how to combine a topo map and a compass to find your location without needing a GPS. As I'll show in a later video, once you know your location, you can use that knowledge to navigate through areas that don't have trails. These days you can use a cell phone or GPS unit to display a map that shows where you are. But hikers still need to understand how to use a map and compass to navigate. Electronic devices can fail most often when their batteries get drained, but for other reasons as well. If you drop your phone in a creek, for example, you can lose your navigation device right there. Experienced hikers also carry a map and a compass and can use them as a backup navigation system as needed. Let's look at how most beginning hikers navigate. They have a map that's not a topographic map, with squiggly lines indicating the local trails. They keep track of their location by mentally progressing along the squiggly lines, just like a bead sliding along a string. For my example of the approach, I'll use a hike based on this map, which has no contour lines, so clearly is not a topo map. This is a picture from the actual hike in the Manzano Mountains of New Mexico. You can find the hike on my website, where it's called the 4th of July High Loop. On this tracing from the map, north is to the right, not at the top where it should be. But if you're just a bead sliding along a string, what do you care? Once you park, you head up the 4th of July Trail, which is Forest Trail 173. At the first trail junction, confusingly, a spur trail with the same number comes in from the right. You continue past that spur trail to the junction with the Albuquerque Trail, Trail 78. There, you turn left and continue on the 4th of July Trail. You may not know which compass direction left is, but again, as a bead on a string, you don't care. At the next junction, the 4th of July Trail ends at the Cerro Blanco Trail, Trail 79. At the junction, you turn right onto the Cerro Blanco Trail. That trail ends at the Crest Trail, Trail 170. You turn right on the Crest Trail. Eventually, you reach one end of the Mosca Trail, Trail 58. Hopefully, you're paying attention, because if you don't turn, there's a non-established trail that continues straight and quickly dies out, leaving you nowhere. You head down the Mosca Trail until you encounter the Albuquerque Trail, Trail 78. You turn right on the Albuquerque Trail and follow it until you encounter the 4th of July Trail, Trail 173, closing the loop. From there, you backtrack to your car, ignoring the 4th of July Spur Trail. If you navigate this way, it's easy to take a wrong turn and be lost, or at least highly confused, even if you never leave the established trails. That can happen whenever a trail intersection isn't clearly marked. Once past the intersection, you're still on a trail, but which one? It's even worse when you step off the trail and can't find your way back to it, because then you could be anywhere. In other words, the bead on the string approach works until it doesn't, at which point you're in trouble. To become an advanced hiker, you need an additional set of navigation skills. The rest of this video assumes that you have two things with you as you hike. One is a topo map. The first eight videos in this series are all about how to read a topo map like a book. The other thing you need is a compass that's set to the local declination the way this one is. In this photo, the needle is lined up with the orienting arrow inside the bezel, and the bezel is rotated to zero degrees, so the direction of travel arrow is pointing to two north. If all of that went over your head, please check out my video for people who haven't used a compass before. I'll use this hypothetical map for training purposes. This time, north is at the top of the map the way it should be. Suppose you're somewhere on the trail system in the bottom half of the map, but you've lost track of where. Let's fix that. Step one is to notice the two prominent hills on your map, somewhere north of you. According to the contour lines, one has two peaks with a saddle between them, and the other hill has a single peak. Next, take out your compass and use it to face true north. Sure enough, you see a hill with a double peak a little off to your left, meaning a little west of true north. You also see a single peak slightly more off to your right, meaning east of true north. So, as a guess, you're somewhere around here. 
You figure it out that much just by reading a topo map and by using your compass to find true north. It's not a great guess because it doesn't tell you which trail you're on or which direction to hike, but it's way better than being completely lost. However, we can do better than that. Since your compass has told you exactly which way true north is, the first thing to do is set your map down flat with the top of the map pointing exactly to true north. Your next step is to take a bearing on a landmark. Let's use the saddle in Saddle Mountain. Not the mountain on your map, the mountain itself. You do that by pointing the direction of travel arrow at the landmark, simultaneously rotating the bezel on the compass until the needle is aligned with the orienting arrow. It's a bit tricky, which is why some hikers prefer a lensatic compass or a base plate compass with a sighting mirror. Here's what the compass should look like when you're done. I'm using the map version of Saddle Mountain, not the actual landmark, but you should get the idea. When the direction of travel arrow is pointing to Saddle Mountain and the compass needle is properly lined up with the orienting arrow inside the bezel, you can read the bearing of the saddle on Saddle Mountain, 340 degrees. In case it's not obvious, the reading is taken at the base of the direction of travel arrow. 340 degrees is also 20 degrees west of north, which means you're 20 degrees east of south from the saddle. Now for the wonderful trick you can do with a base plate compass. Rotate the entire compass 180 degrees so the red and black ends of the needle change places. After rotating the compass, your compass is sitting on the map as you see here. Notice how one corner of the base plate, out of the two nearest the bezel, is on the saddle you sighted on. If you draw a pencil line on your map along the long edge of the base plate next to that corner, the pencil line points to where you are. That's your back bearing. Here I've drawn the back bearing on the map. If you're on a trail, there are two places that you might be along trail 173, and one place you might be on trail 78. That's way better than your initial rough guess. Still, it would help to know exactly where you are. If, for example, your goal is to get to the junction of those two trails, the direction you need to take depends on which trail you're on. The solution is to repeat the process you used for Saddle Mountain, only this time with Pointy Peak. That gives you a second line on your map, and where those two lines intersect, that's where you are. Taking bearings with a handheld compass introduces some error, but if you're careful, you should get enough accuracy to make a proper decision. In this case, you can see that you're on Trail 78, not far east of Trail 173. If you want to get to the intersection of those two trails, you need to hike west, not east. It's always good to check the amount of error in your first two reverse bearings. To do that, plot the back bearing from a third landmark. If the resulting triangle is huge, like you see here, you made a mistake and should check each bearing again. If you've done everything properly, the three lines will define a small triangle marking your probable location. If your goal is to get to the intersections of trails 173 and 78, you now know which way to hike and how far you need to go. Even if you're not on a trail, you can use two or more back bearings to find exactly where you are on the map. If you wandered off an established trail and want to get back to it, knowing where you are helps you figure out which way to go. In the tenth and final video in this series, I'll go over cross-country navigation as part of a planned hike. You may never plan to hike off trail, but you should know how to do that in case you wander off a trail and need to find your way back. In 2013, a hiker died because she left the Appalachian Trail and couldn't navigate back to it, even though the trail was less than two miles away. One reason to make this video series is to help you avoid what happened to her.